Okay, so number four is hydrogen sulfide H2S polar or nonpolar? Okay, so to answer this question, uh, we first need to write the Lewis structure for hydrogen sulfide. So to do that, we need to calculate the total number of valence electrons in this compound. So hydrogen has one valence electron, and there are two hydrogen atoms, so we multiply this by two. And the sulfur contains six valence electrons. So in total, we have eight valence electrons for this compound. So now I'm going to draw sulfur as my central atom since compared to the hydrogen, it is able to form multiple bonds. And then I can draw two bonds to hydrogen. Okay, so if we recall that each bond contains two bonding electrons, uh, and we have two bonds, then I only have four out of the eight electrons drawn in this structure. So I draw the remaining four on my central atom, like so. Okay, so now we have kind of like this bent structure. And we need to find out the electronegativity difference between the sulfur and the hydrogen. So I'm just going to look up the electronegativity values of all the different elements. Okay, so the electronegativity value for sulfur is 2.58 and for hydrogen it's 2.20 okay so when we find out the electronegativity difference we only get around 0 0.38 which isn't that big of a difference so in fact, when we have uh, an electronegativity difference that is less than 0 0.4, this makes our bond nonpolar. So there is quite a debate on whether or not this molecule is polar or nonpolar because we can also look at its bent structure. So because of this bent structure, we just have the tiniest dipole moment going towards the sulfur because it is a bit more electronegative than our hydrogens. And due to the electrons, they don't cancel each other out so I would say that for this question, H2S is considered slightly polar. Just due to its structure. But mainly nonpolar because the bonds that comprise of this molecule are nonpolar. So if we have nonpolar bonds, then that means we have a nonpolar molecule. So again, it's a bit um, up for debate. So let's see what the junior tutor said. Polarity is the product of the uneven distribution of electrons among atoms or molecules in a compound. The polarity of the compound depends on the electronegativity of the atoms that make up the compound. In order to determine the polarity of a compound, the electronegativity difference between bonding atoms is calculated. The electronegativity value is less than 0 0.4, it's considered nonpolar, and if it's between 0 0.4 and 1.7, it's considered polar, if it's greater than 1.7, it's considered ionic.
So they calculated their value to be 0 0.4. So a lot of different references have uh, various electronegativity values. You can see that for theirs, they got 2.6 for their sulfur instead of the 2.58. So if we looked at a different table that rounds, you'll see that it's 2.5 here. So again, this is why it's up for debate, because if we consider the carbon-hydrogen bond, the carbon-hydrogen bond everyone knows is nonpolar, and it would have the same electronegativity difference as 0 0.4, which is the same as the hydrogen-sulfur bond. So they said that this was a polar compound, but I'm just going to write in um, what I know as well. So the explanation for this solution is mainly correct. However, the actual polarity of hydrogen sulfide may be up for debate. Uh, since the sulfur-hydrogen electronegativity difference is the same as carbon-hydrogen, which is considered a non-polar bond. The bent structure of this molecule uh, may lead to a slightly polar molecule. I'll just put it in quotation marks, slightly polar. But I'll still say this solution is correct since they gave um, some valid points. <laughs>